so 12.1 and 12.2 is on the counting principle, permutations, combinations. So uh, we've done this table before. We did it with our activities. So you've seen this table. You just have um, one for the first die, two for the second die. <laughs> Still messing it up. One, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. Okay, and then it's going to be two, one, and then three, one. See how it's going to go all the way down? So just keep filling in your table. So X is going to be the number rolled on the first die. Y is the number rolled on the second die. I always think of the die, the dice having two different colors. So like a red dice die <laughs> and a green die. So that way you can tell the difference between the two. You have your table filled in? Mm -hmm. Okay, how many total possibilities are there for numbers? 36. Does it make sense? There's 36, 36 different outcomes of these two die. All right, how many um, ways are there to roll a 7? Two. Six ways. Do you guys see the ones that roll a 7? You could have 6, 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, 3, 4, 2, 5, and 1, 6. So if I ask for the probability of rolling a 7, no, 6 out of 36, right, or 1, 6. So your answer should be 1, 6. Okay, so that's called the counting principle. You can actually, well, kind of, you can actually list out the possibilities, count them, and uh, find the probability that way. All right, there's another thing called the counting principle. It's a lot easier. So how many different ways, how many different outcomes could I have with one die? So, six. How many could I have with the second die? Six. So the number of outcomes total, if I rolled two dice, would be six times six, which is 36. Okay, that's the other one, so the multiplication rule. Okay, question, what's the probable, probability of rolling less than five? Be careful. Yes, there's six ways out of 36. Less than five means you wouldn't count the ones where they're equal to five. So there'd be one, two, three, four, five, six ways. That would be 6 out of 36, which is also 1 6. Okay, so in this last example, it was pretty easy to list out the, out the uh, different ways, different outcomes, right? But I don't want to do that if it's more than 36. That would take forever. I mean, it took forever to fill in that table. So sometimes there's so many possibilities, it's impossible or very tedious to, to list them. So we're going to use what we call the fundamental counting principle. And that's what I just said. It's the multiplication rule. So if you have two events, E1 and E2, and the probability of the first one's M1, the probability of the second is M2. So think of numbers. If the probability of the, or if the number of ways, I guess, that the first can occur is 9, the number of ways that the second can occur is 10, if you just do 9 times 10, there'd be 90 different outcomes. This is like the tree diagram. Remember Umi's outfits? That's what that is. If she had two outfits, or two choices of footwear, so sandals or heels, three shirts, two choices of bottoms, like a skirt or jeans. She had two times three times two different ways to dress herself, right? Okay, so this blank is M1 times M2. Okay. So example one, it says Cold Stone Creamery has 10 different choices of ice cream. Oh. <laughs> 12 different choices of toppings and three different sizes of waffle cones or waffle bowls. If you want to get a waffle bowl, one kind of ice cream, and two toppings, how many different ways can you choose your um, dessert? So the first thing I'm going to choose is the waffle cone, or the waffle bowl, I guess. I'm, then I'm going to pick the ice cream. Then I'm going to pick topping number one, and topping number two. Okay, the toppings aren't going to be the same. I'm going to make them different. So how many choices did I have for the waffle bowl? Three. Three. How many for the ice cream? 
10. How many for topping number one? 12. How many for topping number two? 11. That's right. I told you you couldn't pick the same thing. So the number of total possibilities I could have is 3 times 10 times 12 times 11. So someone help me out. I don't have my calculator back here. So do 30 times 132. 6,000. What was it? 3,960. Three, Thank you. So 3,960. Lots of ice cream possibilities. Okay, number two. A true or false quiz has five questions. How many different answer sets are possible? So I would have question one, question two, question three. You always don't have to write underneath what you're picking, but this is just for your notes, so question five. How many different things can I put for question one? True or false, right? Two choices. How many for question two? Still two choices. So this ends up being two times two times two times two times two. So two to the fifth, which is 32, right? So if you go in there blind, basically you have not studied at all, what is your probability of getting an A plus on the test? It is not happening. It's not happening, right? It'd be one out of 32. So if you were one of those people that goes into like the SATs and just fills in blanks, has no idea, doesn't look at the problem, your probability of doing well in the SATs would be very bad. <laughs> so studying is good. <laughs> studying improves your probability. All right, seven questions. Seven questions. We have A, B, C, or D as our choices. So how many sets of answers are possible? So four choices for the first, four choices for the second, right? A through D. So it's four to what power? Seven. It is not seven to the fourth. That's the biggest mistake I'll see people do on this. They'll flip them. So four to the seventh. Sixteen thousand three eighty-four. Make sense? Next up. An exam has 10 multiple choice questions and five true false questions. How many different sets of answers are possible? All right, I don't want to draw my little, I call this the slot method. I don't want to draw the slot. Think about it logically. 10 choices, or 10 multiple choice questions. So let's say it's A through D again. I didn't write that, but A through D. So that means I'd have 10 slots, right, that all have four in it. So I'd have four to the 10th and five true-false questions. So I'd have five slots that would all have two in it. So two to the fifth. So four to the tenth times two to the fifth, what do we get? L, tell me the number. Yeah, Nate, do you have it? Four hundred and thirty-two. Did I miss something? Two fours. Okay. I thought it was two fours. Three, three, five, five, four, four, three, two. Good. Okay. So back when you guys were young, do you guys remember um, counties used to have license plates that started with two numbers? And the, or, I mean, our, our state, Indiana, our counties were listed as the first two numbers. So if you're from Marion County, your license plate started with a 4-9. Do you guys remember that? No. Now it says 06 and Bonham. Now, are you guys from Hamilton? So this is say Boom. So it says at the very top. So now the license plates look like, at the very top, it says, mine says 49 Marion, like really tiny. And then I have my numbers here. Oh, maybe it is at the bottom. I don't know. I thought it was at the top. All right, um, so back in the day, you were really excited when someone had your county because you're like, oh, maybe I know them. And you drive past them and you'd be like, hey, I do know you. Okay, <laughs> not so much now. You can't really see them. They're so tiny. You can't really tell. All right, so in 2007, Mary Co a Marion County license plate began with the numbers 4 and 9 and then had a letter followed by four other numbers. 
If the letter could be any letter in the alphabet, and the numbers could be any, t any digit 0 through 9, how many different license plates could Marion County have? Do you think this would be enough? Okay, so the first numbers are definitely going to be a 4 and a 9. So let's, maybe you can put a 1 in there, I don't know. So one choice for those. So these are definitely 4 and 9 already. There's only one choice for that, a 4 and a 9. All right, after that I have a letter and then four numbers. Okay, so how many choices for the letter? 26. How many choices for the numbers? 0 through 9 is how many choices? 10, 10, 10, and 10. I'm allowed to repeat my numbers, or my, yeah, my numbers at the end. So I have 2, 6 with four zeros. So 260,000. Okay, was that enough for Marion County? Nope, there's a lot of people in Marion County. There's definitely more than 260,000. Like a million? I don't know. We should look up the population. We'll look it up at the end of class. But it's definitely more than 260,000. So that means that um, that there wasn't enough. So someone in the first class, they looked up how many how many counties we have. Does anybody know how many counties we have? I think it's 92. I think that's what they said in the first class. So there's 92 counties. So what Marion County ended up doing back in the day is they had 49. They had 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, and 99. They had eight different numbers to start off their license plates. So if you saw anybody that was more than 93, they were definitely from Marion County. Okay. All right, here we go. So an ID code consists of two of the digits, one through five, followed by three letters, A through D. You are allowed to repeat numbers or letters. So for instance, you can have 2, 2, A, B, C, and 1, 2, A, A, D. Those are both acceptable codes. So how many different codes are possible? So I start out with two digits, one through five. And then I have three letters, A through D. And I'm allowed to repeat. Close, not four. What, what number goes in the first one? Five, because one through five would be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then four, four, four. So it's five squared times four to the third. So what is that? 1,600? So 1,600 different possibilities. My one looks a little weird with 1,600. My pen's like really slow today. Okay, so if you had some kind of company and you wanted them to have these codes to get into the building, then they'd be allowed to do that. If you had less than 1,600 people, you could do it that way. Okay, so number seven, repeat example six, but now make the additional stipulation that you cannot repeat numbers or letters. So then how many codes would be possible then? Five and four, right? And then what? Four, three, two. It doesn't go five, four, three, two, one. The five and the four were the letters, or the numbers, I mean. And then the four, three, two were the, num were the letters. Okay, so what's that? 480. Okay, now I'll repeat example six, but now make the additional stipulation that we cannot repeat letters, but we can repeat numbers. So if you, if you can repeat numbers, that means the first spots are five and five. And then four, three, two, right? So what do we get when we do that? 600. All right, make it sense. So we have two different formulas that we're going to need to know. So permutations and combinations. All right, permutations, the order matters. So let's write that. So order matters. I always think of things like class officers, like president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. 
You guys don't really have that here, but you've probably had it in the past. Okay, and then for combinations, order doesn't matter. Okay, these are things like groups or committees. Okay, so here are your two formulas. So if I have a permutation, I'm going to write it as P n comma R. So this is n things that I'm going to put in R different positions. So let's say I have um, Algebra 2 Olympics. Remember we played that one day? And I was going to place first, second, and third places. All right, but there's 20 of you. All right, and I have 20 people that could go in first, second, and third. Okay, so it'd be 20 and then 3, so 23. All right, the way you do this is it's n factorial over n minus r factorial. I'll show you in a second, but permutations are just the slot method. That's all it is. Okay. Other things you could see. You could see N with a P and then R, like that. Okay, combinations you might see a couple different ways. So combinations you could see C, N, R. You might also see just an N on top of an R with parentheses. It looks kind of like a fraction, but there's no fraction bar. It's just N over the R. No fraction bar between them. Or N, C, R. Okay, so you can see both those ways. All means the same thing. Okay, and what this is is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. So you just divide by another R factorial. 